Welcome back to Design Bundles YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Crystal. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to work with a file with multiple layers. Now, I'm also gonna show you if you're new to Silhouette Studio and you are using the basic edition, how to use a DXF file as well as a PNG as an SVG. So if you guys are new to Silhouette Studio or you've already been using it but you still need some tips and tricks, you guys may know that you cannot use an SVG file with a basic edition. So Silhouette wants you to upgrade to be able to use that um, SVGs, but you definitely don't need to. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so there is two ways to work with this like an SVG. So you can use a DXF or a PNG. So I'm going to go ahead and show you now. So what you're going to do is you're just going to click on the file folder here and we're gonna open the file folder that we're using today. So today I'm using this Lucky shirt. I'll have this file linked down below for you guys. And as you guys can see, it comes in several formats, but you can tell which ones we're able to use because they are in bold. So as you guys can see here for the SVG, it's not gonna let us click on it. So it's not even highlighted. So the only options we have is a DXF file a PNG, and a JPEG. Now I know with the DXF you can't see anything, they're just white um, pages, but you notice that the font is in bold, so that's one way to tell. So let's go ahead and start off with our DXF files. We're gonna go ahead and hit OK. So it's gonna load it in here for us. So what I wanna tell you right away is I know that this is something that scares a lot of people that are new to Silhouette or a lot of people that are just new to die cutting in general and you have went straight to a Silhouette and say, for example, not Cricut. So with the Silhouette software, say for example, I brought my DXF file in here. You're gonna notice these pieces are individual. So if I try to move the shamrock, it's gonna move little pieces at a time. So we need, there's a few things we need to do to prep it. But when we hear make a compound and um, you know compound path and all these things, it gets a little scary. So the very first thing I wanna start out by saying is, if you plan on cutting this all one color, so say for example, I was gonna go ahead, even though it shows it's in colors, I can layer it out if I want to. I plan on cutting this all out in green. I plan on cutting it all out in black, whatever it may be. I don't need to do anything. You don't need to attach anything. You don't need to do anything. As long as you select everything when you go to size, size it out. So say for example, I grab with my mouse. I'm gonna hold my mouse down. I'm gonna select over everything from corner to corner. And then what I'm gonna do is I can then grab this corner right here without letting go. I'm gonna now grab this corner and I can size it out. So I could go ahead and keep an eye on these numbers here. So say for example, I want somewhere around 10 inches. So I'm gonna get it right about here. So as you noticed, everything went with me. If it didn't, all I would need to do is hit the undo button, which is right here, and then start over and try again. So once I was happy with it, the size is cut out where I need it to be, we're gonna go ahead and send it over. You may wanna check a few pages, like this page layer right here. Um, you may wanna go in here, make sure your machine is the, you know, whatever, Say for example, I'm using Cameo Plus. Um, you wanna make sure your cutting mat, I've, I've got mine at 15 by 15. What's your media size? So say I was using you know, a 12 by 12, um, I could go ahead and do that. So that way we know what we're working with. And then at that point, I would go ahead and send it over. So just a few things you may wanna check before you cut. And then from here, once I got in here, I could choose my material um, and all of those. Now, if I chose heat transfer vinyl, for example, it's going to give me an option to mirror it before I cut it out. Um, so I don't have to do anything. There's nothing special. I didn't have to attach anything. I didn't have to weld anything. And I didn't have to do a compound path. So if it's just one solid color, don't worry about anything. So it would be just like this, and we would just simply cut it out, like I said. So you'd choose. So if I was using adhesive vinyl, I wouldn't need to mirror it, and I would cut it out. Now, if I wanted to as well, if I wanted to flip everything, instead of trying to mirror it later, I could select everything once again. I could right-click, and then from here, I can flip horizontal. So I could go ahead and do this now, and now everything is mirrored for us. And that's just if you were gonna leave it as one solid color. So let's go ahead and flip this guy back just like this. So now, what if 
you were doing the multiple layers. So when you first purchased this design, you may have noticed that these were green, this is gold, this is a lighter green, but everything else is the exact same color green. So what we can do is we can go ahead, so say for example, Lucky, I'm gonna go ahead and take my mouse here and I'm gonna select over these pieces right here. So I have selected Lucky, this middle piece here, and this piece. You don't wanna forget those pieces. So what I'm gonna do now is right click and I'm gonna put make a compound path. So at this point, I could go ahead and come up here to my colors. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and change the color for that Lucky. We're gonna go ahead and choose gold, which is this yellow. I could definitely really work here until I find the color I want it to be. And then my next ones here, I'm gonna go ahead and choose, this is, um, this is, I'm gonna right click and I would hit make a compound path. And then I'm gonna choose a color for this one. So this is the screen right here. And then we're gonna do the same. So this shamrock right here, as well as my, um, we are going to right click, we're gonna make a compound path, and then we're gonna change it to that exact same color green. So same thing with these ones right here. Select everything, right click, scroll down, make a compound path, and then choose the green. So my last one right here was this lime green. I'm just simply going to select it and I'm gonna choose a lime green. So there we go, so there's all of my colors. So um, I don't need to turn this into a compound path because it's one single piece. I don't need to do anything with the single pieces. Now I did attach these because I want them to all be together. So what I'm gonna do now is make sure, see how I move this around and I left this little piece. I'm actually gonna undo this and I'm gonna make sure I've got everything this time. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna right click and make a compound path. There we go, so now those are officially connected. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna select this one, undo that really quick. I'm gonna hold this one down, I'm gonna hit shift on my keyboard, select this one down here, and then what I wanna do is group those. I'm gonna right click and group. You could also group up here. So if you notice, if you hover above these, it says group and ungroup. So your group and ungroup are right here, and if you're ever confused on these, just hover above and it will show those. So now you can see we have our green layer, our gold layer, and the light green. So if you want to, you could actually scoot these around on your map to where you can line up your colors. So say, for example, I could rotate this by grabbing this here, rotate it, and put this down here just to kind of get them to fit a little bit. Maybe I need to rotate this guy. So whenever I go to cut, I could do multiple at a time. So we could rotate this guy just a little bit, just trying to make sure everything's staying within the map. I just don't want nothing to be on top of each other. And then I can move this little guy like right down here. That way what I can do is once I go to send this over to be cut out, um, see this right here is gonna get cut off. So I need to make sure and adjust this like so. Now, if I can't fit this on here, I could actually just remove it. Anything that is off the map that's in this gray area is not going to cut. So you can do this in if you're over here at send, or you can even do this in design. So if we go back to design, you're going to notice that that guy is right over here. So anything that is to the right of your cutting mat, it's not going to cut. So, um, so we can just move these pieces off and we can just cut the green layer. And so we would go to send, we would choose our proper settings, and then before we cut it out, if you were using heat transfer vinyl, it's going to tell you to mirror it. If we were using adhesive vinyl, we wouldn't need to mirror it. So if I wanted to, I could mirror them right here by right-clicking and flipping horizontal and having it do right here on the mat. So um, you can, once we're done, I cut this piece, I'll come back to the design, and then I would add in my next color and place it on here just like so. So that's how easy it is to use the DXF file. Now you don't have to come over here and change the colors like I did. That's just if you need to see visually um, your colors. So now let's go ahead and look at it if we were using a, I'm gonna go ahead and hit don't save. All right, so this time we're gonna choose the PNG version. If you choose the JPEG, it's not going to have the outline on it. Um, it's gonna be just like a print and cut. So the PNG version, we're gonna hit okay. So it has like an auto trace for the PNG. So it traces it just like a, an SVG. But you notice if we click on it this time, other than the DXF file, it's grabbing everything. So like before, it wasn't. It was individualizing everything because right now everything is grouped together. So what we wanna do is right click 
and we are going to click release compound pass. So that way they're individual. So now it's just like the DXF file, except for it's already colored for us. So I do like generally working with the PNGs just right away because we are able to release them like this. Um, so the colors are already there for us and then we would just release that compound path and then we would go through the same thing and select you know, all of our pieces like so back it up one, right click it and hit group. So that way if I was to move this file over, um, it would it would not be losing any of my pieces. So I would once again do that with the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and undo this for a second because once again, I would wanna group all of these pieces. So let's grab our lucky first so we can get it out of our way. And so I'm just gonna select everything, making sure once again, I'm getting this piece and this piece, right click, group, and you can see, I can simply get that completely out of our way. And then we can come in here really quickly and I'm going to scoot this guy out of our way, select everything, that way we can deal with this one first. We're gonna right click and then we're just going to group it together. So it's ready to go. It's got our colors together. It's gonna to do exactly what I need it to do. So everywhere there's a red line, it's going to cut it for us. As you can see, we've got our little colors here. So now what we need to do is if I go to send, you guys can see all of those red lines, that's where it's gonna cut for us. Um, and it works just like an SVG file. Once again, we can go back to design. Um, I could get this one off of here, um, completely off of the mat, if you will. And then I could go ahead and bring this one up here. Go ahead and hit send. Same thing, it's gonna cut where those red lines are. So don't worry about if you look at it and you say, well, I can still see these little white pieces right here. Don't worry about it, it's completely okay. So we're not doing a print thing cut, we're just, we're cutting it out just like an SVG. So um, Silhouette has this like auto reader for their, um, for their PNGs where auto outlines like this for us. So it just makes it super duper easy. So highly recommend that you just bring in your PNGs, but you definitely could do the DXF files as well. So I really hope this helps somebody that wants to stick with the Silhouette Studio basic model. Um, and then also maybe somebody that is new to Silhouette Studio. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the like button down below and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one.